Okay, um, it's my honor and pleasure to share my review of the big data with you. Uh, the, I think we all heard a lot about big data and uh, I think as the <coughs> Tony Shah just show you, you know, the growth of this term uh, in the Google search and uh, you know, 1,000 percent whatever increase. So maybe next year another 1,000 percent increase. What I'd like to discuss is discuss about the challenges, the opportunities. First, do we agree big data will always get big paid off? So is this a reality? Is this a guarantee? Is this a promise? Is this a hope? Or is this a wish? Okay. And then why and why not? Then my position. So now we all know big data. It grows so fast. Suddenly, everybody, we have a lot of data in our office, in our home. And uh, I just, one thing some of you probably heard about, I have two positions, one at the CMU, the other at uh, Louisiana State University. But I still not moved physically to Pittsburgh yet. My home's still in Louisiana. Why? Because there's so many things in my office and in my home. And there's, it takes forever to figure out what is important, what can be thrown away, and so I just better to stay put. Now, the other thing is you probably know the astronomy data, and I think uh, Tony Shaw showed a, a famous person in database, uh, Gray, uh, Dr. Gray, I think he, uh, he was working with some astronomers on this astronomy data. So there's a lot of uh, data in uh, each scan of the sky we created one terabyte data. So here's Dr. Gray's contribution, is he built the SQL database, SQL database, for that uh, sky's uh, so-called stone sky survey. So the data stored in the relational database can be searched easily, uh, so that's a big plus for the astronomers. The other thing is the government collects a lot of data about us. We're going to talk more later on. <coughs> So let's do a quick survey here. How many of you think it's a reality? Big, how many of you think? Big data, we're always creating big payoff. Nobody? I, I, think. I think so. At least we get several <laughs> panelists here. And um, <clears throat> so uh, I don't ask them why. Okay. Now, do you think that's a guarantee? Yes? Okay. How about a promise? Okay, more, more. Okay. How about uh, a hope, a wish? Okay. Now, how about number five? <laughs> number five? Okay. Initially, last night, I mean, not last night, one week ago, I tried to put something there as a failures. Okay. But I don't want to do that. I think we'll make big some of the Panel is very unhappy. Now, what I see here is this, the one thing we are very good, what I mean is why we are very good, because we are the computer scientists, we're born in this stage, okay? And every five years, or a couple of years, we have a new buzzword, okay? And then we can keep on learning about that and publish paper about that, and then we can create a new conference about that. <laughs> and then we get reason to go to conferences like this, okay? Now, don't just laugh, it's reality, okay? That's one thing I call it reality. Because I talk to my friend in mathematics, they teach calculus. It's never changed for the last 100 years, okay? Uh, so they are out of a job now. <clears throat> so we keep us, the good thing is about this, is the so-called Promise or guarantee, not that guarantee, promise or wish. Most of the time in computer, fortunately, it's become a reality. So that's really good. So if we don't have such good success rate, we will not be able to keep on creating new things and keep on getting your more job, more opportunities. Now, <clears throat> so what I'd like to do <clears throat> is to 
see it, uh, express to you my view of the whole thing here. What are the critical things? Okay? Not just say big data is great. What are the challenges? What are the opportunities? What I see is that at least three major challenges. <clears throat> One is perform a real-time analysis. Make the analysis useful, near real-time. You know, many of the things, I think uh, Eric just showed you the processing. He showed you a very nice chart. It's good. Try to position the Hadoop and other product. Why could be useful? But uh, he is also mentioning about as a background type of analysis. It's like a slow type of processing. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I think the previous two panelists tends to think big data equal to Hadoop. Okay? Now, my definition is a little broader. It's not just Hadoop. Hadoop is one of the tools for a certain kind of big data. So big data means the data is massive, which you know, could be handled by different kind of things and doesn't have to be in particular tool type of thing. Now, when you have massive type of data, we really need real-time analysis. I will explain each more later. The second challenge is the data format. The so-called, I put down there, say, data, data format, media, three things. One is the data itself. The data keep on changing. The data also need to be preserved, need to be deciphered and conversion. The other is the format of data also keep on changing. Okay? Uh, that's also a big problem. Media preservation. Okay? Media is keep on changing. And uh, we have the big problem of preserving them, deciphering them, and conversion of them. Now, we have, each of us have a lot of data. I'm going to talk about that. And uh, that's creating a big problem for individuals and for companies. The third thing is the entity resolution. Figure out who is who, what is what, okay? That's the core of the problem, okay? Now, let me talk about each one in more detail. The first one is we need the real, near real time analysis and make something useful. What does that mean? A lot of complaint about the weather and uh, weather forecasting. I think um, many of you probably People like me used to live in Louisiana, still live there. And uh, so the hurricane every year, uh, <clears throat> suddenly Katrina make a big uh, news around the world. So that was also caused partially by inaccuracy of the prediction of uh, the hurricane. But then the next year, they, all the weather forecasts are predicting there will be more uh, storm like that. And then, uh, <clears throat> once they even predict will be a big storm, so everybody has to, all the people in New Orleans have to drive to Baton Rouge, that's about 90 miles, that's the place my home is. So the traffic back up. Usually it would only take one and a half hour to drive, but it, that particular day would take nine hours to drive, okay? The good, the, the, the thing make people very mad is, the, the sky was so beautiful. <laughs> they are stuck there and couldn't get out of the exit, okay, the freeway. You're stuck in the freeway and uh, no water and uh, supposed to have a huge rain with a lot of water. There, there are no rain and you didn't bring any water bottles, so you're thirsty there, okay? So that's the problem. Now, why weather forecasting causing the problem? Because we do have good model. We do have a lot of data. However, to run the super good model using huge amount of data, maybe take 24 hours, 38 hours. Now, 38 hours, does that help you? No, you want the real time data. Also disaster handling, same thing, okay? Now, <clears throat> certainly national security, a lot of things you respond, you want to respond in quickly, you know, 30 minutes or three hours. Now, we also, in the place I work, the CMU Software Engineering Institute, and we have the CERT, uh, which we have collection of a lot of malware. That's, we probably have tens of millions of malware sam samples. So everybody bothered by malware, 
And uh, so, so there's a lot of more where when you see something which is suspicious, you want to know quickly whether it's really malware or not. Okay? Now, the malware writers or producers, they are very smart. They are changing a little bit you know, every second or every hour. So they, you want to figure out whether it's the same or belong to the same family. So the quicker you detect that, the quicker you can prevent a lot of things get uh, attacked, <coughs> contaminated. So those are things that are important. Now, right now we have something so-called Hadoop and map reduced. It's a very good thing to provide in parallel, okay? Parallel processing. But is that enough? No. We need to do something. We need to look at the program structure. We need to look at the data structure. And uh, so many of you work in other fields. So you can apply that to this field. That's what I suggest to you. Now, the important thing I like to say is the last one. What I see is the big data really causing us to be too lazy, okay? Too lazy, what does that mean? Right now, we don't, we just throw a lot of things to computer, let computer figure out, okay? We, and also the vendor tell us the, the data store is so cheap, why don't you just store everything? Yes, you store everything, but when you try to find it, you may not be able to find it, okay? So what I see is we really need to classify the importance of data, okay? That's the thing only you and I can do, okay? The computer probably can help, probably take several years building more intelligence to that. Now, the other things I want to show is the preservation of data. That's another thing we need to do. There's a lot of data in different forms. Uh, just having, I mentioned to you, my office still and home still in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I haven't touched anything for a long, long time. And then, fortunately, I mean, I supposed to move something to Pittsburgh, but I haven't done that yet until our famous chancellor of Louisiana State University said, we want to merge two departments in one. Your computer science people too expensive. We want to move you to double E, electrical engineering, okay? So we have to abandon our office to move to electrical engineering. So everybody have to move out of the office, clean up the office. So I spent several weekends nonstop trying to figure out what's important, what's not important, throw it away. Okay? Now, after I throw things away, I get a phone call from a big software company and said, Peter, can you be an expert witness? Okay, then I say, what's about? He talked, mentioned me about that particular case. I said, oh, I have evidence. Then he said, okay, great, 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 okay. We'll hire you. Then he said, then I said, gee, I throw it away, okay. Now, <clears throat> because that's the, in the old floppy disk, okay. I thought that's no use, and I don't have a floppy disk reader anymore. Throw it away. Now, <clears throat> so that's the problem, a lot of things like that, okay. So similar thing, you know, we have a lot of data in different forms. You know, when people coming in from outer space, you know, how can they figure out you know, how to read everything? Now, let me touch the last point. The last point is about the entity resolution. <clears throat> that I would think out of all the problem, this is probably the most critical problem. Um, <clears throat> there's a, you look at here, same person, different name, like myself. I have Peter Chen, Peter P. Chen, Peter P.S. Chen, okay? maybe more. And um, then, uh, so when you try to find out what paper I publish, and that's really difficult, okay? And also some people else have same name as Peter Chen, and they publish paper and credit to me. And that's welcome, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right? So please, uh, Change your name to Peter Chen, okay? <laughs> now, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> why this is important? Let me just show you. Some of you came here maybe two days ago. This is a Sunday local newspaper. The headline here is Man of Mystery. Man of Mystery. How many of you have seen that? 
you, know, you guys probably on the beach, okay? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a person who was born in Honolulu, okay? He moved to Illinois more than 50 years ago and get married for 51 years. His wife didn't know his real name, okay? Until he has Alzheimer's disease. And uh, his wife just visited him maybe a couple of months ago, shake his hands. Then he said, I'm, uh, my name is Mr. Choi, okay? But his, his wife only known him for Curtis Lee, okay? That's for 51 years, okay? So now you can see even how difficult the problem is, okay? Even for a wife married to somebody for 51 years, doesn't know the real person's name. How, how can the computer figure out, okay? So that's the important thing. And that's the reason I tell you the problem. Now, the thing I find out the problem is I'm working on <coughs> several projects, okay? One project is working on the last one. I cannot mention about other things. <coughs> now, the other thing is that the government right now try to do something tracking of people, okay? The people from primary school to high school to college and try to predict your future, whether you can earn more. Probably we all know the people getting college earn twice as more as people getting high school degrees. How do they get the data? Because they are tracking people, okay? Now they want to track more. They want to figure out whether you have done anything, whether you have taken any courses, whether you have taken courses from Peter Chan, okay? Now, so everything will be triggered to that. It's uh, Steve Yao, whatever, okay? So that's the important thing. But when I get to that, you find out all the problem we mentioned, the data incompatibility, and also the who is who, it's so complicated. Why? Because in the past, we used social security number as the identifier. Right now, we are not allowed to use that. So we use something else. So they're all the data are using different identifier. And uh, everybody using different thing. And people from foreign country, they are not doing that. So that's a big thing. So I think you know, we get into that. And that's the biggest problem we have encountered. And um, let me just stop here. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>